Let's make this professional sports poster design in Photoshop. So let's start with the background. I'm gonna bring in a gradient adjustment layer to start. And let's just go into our gradient fill and change this first color to the Minnesota blue. And then the second color, we'll just go to a white. And this blue is a little bit darker than I want, so I'm just gonna brighten it up. It's definitely gonna be like a mostly light themed graphic. So our subject for today is gonna to be Brandon Mattis of the Minnesota Wind Chill, and to kind of go with this wind chill theme, I've got some assets downloaded. We've got this ice texture, so we've kind of got this like natural cold feel to the background, and then we'll stick with blue as kind of the primary coloring we'll do. But if you switch this blend mode to soft light and drop down the opacity, just give it a subtle texture. And then I've also got this cold fog foggy texture. I got this from unsplash.com. It's more of a, a photo than a texture, but we're gonna use it to texturize our background a little bit more. So I'm just bringing that in and blowing it up. And we're just gonna see like the detail of these trees in the corner. And again, we'll set this blend mode to soft light. So next I'm gonna drag in kind of the focal points of the design. We'll start with the Windchill logo, which we're gonna blow up nice and big. Center that, if you hit Command A, select the whole screen, and then with your move tool, you can click these icons at the top to center. And then I've got three player cutouts, and we've got the front one, a slightly bigger one we'll use in the middle. And to size these, after I drag in this last one, I'm gonna use the 1.6 ratio that you might've seen me use in other designs. But basically I wanna make all the head sizes all the same size as this middle cut out approximately. And then we're just gonna multiply or divide by 1.6. So the biggest cutout, I'm gonna hit Command T to transform and then linking these proportions, let's hit multiply 1.6. And we've got our sizing for the big guy. Our small cutout, there he is. We can bring him in front of everything. Again, matching the head size the best we can with this second cutout, again, Command T divided by 1.6. And there's a few things you can do when you have like bigger cutouts going behind a smaller one. The classic thing would just be to like fade them all out, but we're gonna use a shape in the background, in this case we have the logo, to mask out the limits of this bigger cutout. The second one, because he's jumping, I kinda wanna make it so he's like coming out of the logo. Maybe we wanna move this up a bit more. So the jumping one, I don't see much of an issue with, but this biggest one, we see like his legs are cut off, so we have to do something with that. We can't just leave it. As is. So here's how we're gonna use the logo to mask out this back cutout. I'm gonna hide him for now, and I'll actually hide the other guys as well. Let's use our pen tool, P is a shortcut. We're just gonna draw out a shape that has a straight line going along this bottom edge of our logo. So let's click a point on the bottom of the logo, and then a point on this corner, and then we can just draw out kind of like a random big shape around. Cause all that we care about is this bottom edge that we're masking. So now let's hold command, click on the thumbnail of the layer. And then going back to our big cutout, you can just click the mask with this shape still selected. And we now have this guy masked to the outline of the logo. And we've kind of filled in the gap and we can add back in our other guys and then get to work with some player editing. So let's start by adding some shadows to our man on the ground. I'm just gonna take a, a soft black brush. We can bring the flow all the way up. Just click once and then give him a little bit of a base layer of shadow to stand on. You can duplicate that layer, bring it up a little more, flatten it out and then can lower this opacity just so we have some like extra shadow filtering out the sides. He's feeling a little low to me, so I'm gonna move him with his shadows up. I also wanna increase his size. I know it's going against my proportions from before, but I, you know, those are more of like a guiding principle rather than a hard and fast rule you have to follow. For our player retouching, we're gonna run all of these through camera raw filter. You can see the colors are matching pretty well right now, like the black of the jersey is pretty consistent, the blues are pretty consistent on the sleeves. Skin tones look good. So I think we should be able to use the same camera raw settings for all of these. We can start with our front man, go up to filter, camera raw filter, and let's make some basic adjustments. I always like to bring up the exposure a bit, bring down the highlights so we get some more detail, and then boosting the shadows, you can really see that jersey detail coming out as well. 
and can add some texture and clarity. And if we want to, we can add some noise reduction just to give it this like smooth look. I've been doing a lot of that recently with my player cutouts. And now let's apply these same settings to the other ones. Hold option, click and drag on the smart filters to both of the bigger cutouts. I'm also gonna group these into folders. You can call this one small cutout and medium and big. Next, we're gonna do some curves adjustments. So let's start with our small cutout. I'm gonna bring in a curves layer, clip it to the cutout layer by holding option, hovering in that space and clicking. And then I'm just gonna boost these points from the midpoint. And now we can hide our curves layer by holding command and hitting I to invert the mask. So now anything we paint on in white is gonna show through. So this is how we're gonna apply some highlights to this image and we're gonna do the same thing with the shadows as well and get some good shading. But basically, just by clicking, we can lower our flow to, I don't know, maybe 17%. Just by clicking on the edges here, we can go through and kind of accentuate the parts that are already a little bit brighter, just give our cutout some more specific contrast. So this is going to take the longest, as you've probably seen in my other videos. I am going to fast forward this part to save you from watching me painstakingly go through every area and highlight and shade the cutout accordingly. I noticed a little bit of the edges on this cutout aren't perfect, so let's go ahead and put a mask on this whole cutout and shrink it in by a pixel. Hold command, click on your cutout, Go up to select, modify, contract, and we're just gonna shrink it by one pixel and then click our mask icon. It's just gonna bring in the edges a little bit more. You can see fingers look a little bit small now, but we can just bring those back, bring our flow back to 100, going in with our brush and basically only masking out the parts that we didn't want that edge showing. Next, we're gonna do the same curves adjustment with the dark tones. So let's duplicate this layer, delete that layer mask. Let's bring this point down now. We're shading. And now we can again inverted mask on this. So hold option, click on your mask. It's gonna make the mask entirely black. And now again with a slightly reduced flow, we can color in the dark parts of our image. And again, really accentuate that contrast. And we're gonna go through the same exact process with the other two cutouts. So I'll skip ahead and we will resume with rounding out our design with some more elements. And throughout this process, you'll be going back and forth between a white and black brush, kind of tapering out and fine tuning your shading. And this process is just something that takes practice to get good at and get comfortable with it. I'm still relatively new to it, like I don't do this in all my designs, but it does make a difference. I would encourage you to check it out. And then I think with the bottom part of this cutout, I want it so he's like going into this logo, if that makes sense, or coming out of it rather. So let's make a new layer and just drop a gradient over it, a black to transparent gradient, click and drag from below the logo, just to like fade out this bottom part, like he's getting a shadow naturally from this shape. So those are gonna be our basic adjustments with camera raw filter and curves. Next, I'm seeing the colors are not matching really at all in this design. It's so like you have the blue of the sleeves and this different gray blue of the logo and then a slightly different blue of the background. So I'm gonna take all the cutouts because we have roughly the same blue in all of them. Let's group them together in a folder and call it players. And now let's make our color adjustments. Let's bring in a hue and saturation layer. We don't need any of this extra color that's in the jersey right now. Like this is not totally grayscale. So to get rid of that, it's probably mostly blue. I'm gonna go to the blues and you can check, see by going negative 100 with saturation, you can see it's just making it totally black and, and gray tones. It also is taking some color out of these sleeves, but I think I'm okay with it because it's getting us closer to the color of the background. And I just want to make sure the color is consistent throughout the design. And then at the end, we can shift the colors however we want to with hue and saturation, just as long as it's changing all of them in the same way. So I'm also going to drag on a selective color adjustment layer. We can mess with these blues further. And I'm just looking to match it better with 
the background and then we'll do the same thing with the logo as well. Something like this feels pretty close. Now with the logo, again, adjustment layers, selective color. Let's make this one, yeah, probably boosting the cyans and you'll have to play with this to get it right. So maybe something like this, but more desaturated. Let's see, hue and saturation layer, maybe more saturation. Let's see. Yeah, that's probably getting us closer. Like lighter with more saturation. That feels pretty good. Like there's something of the shade in maybe the shadows of of the arms of blue. I'm also gonna play with the skin tones a bit with our players. I like to boost the reds. So if you lower the cyan value, it just helps pop the skin tones a bit more which I think is a nice touch. Let's move on to some supporting elements. So I'm gonna start with some text. Let's make a new layer, hit T for your type tool, and let's type out Brandon Mattis, one, two, three, four, five, six spaces, number 61. And again, set this to black. This is Montserrat is the font we're using. I'm gonna bring it down to 12 point font, spaced out as is, and then we're gonna rotate it. If you hit Command T, you can free transform and rotate from the edges. And let's just line it up on the side of the design. Bring up my grids. Let's move it two boxes from the left. I'm gonna duplicate the same layer, bring it over to the right side. Let's flip it the other way. This one will write Minnesota wind chill, one, two, three, four, five, six, defender. So we've got his team position, name, number. Next thing I'm gonna drag in is a player signature. We're gonna drop this on top of the design. We've got his authentic signature written out and I'm gonna put this, maybe we should go behind the cutout. So we have his bun going over it. And then as far as the, the coloring of it goes, I wanna play with a gradient for this, similar to what we did with the background. This like light blue to white, kind of gives it this nice, shiny look. And I think it's okay that the logo is a good bit darker from everything else, just to help the rest of the design pop. Let's see if we switch these. Yeah, so we can get the white on bottom, the light blue on top. And that feels right to me because it's complementing the light blue we're seeing at the bottom of the design. I think we can get away with blowing up everything in the middle here just a little bit more. So basically everything except the text in the background. I just wanna see how this looks. I feel like if we can fill the canvas a little bit more, we should go for it as long as we maintain the overall white space and like it doesn't feel too crammed on any edge. Finally, we are ready for some finishing effects. So let's make a new folder, call it finishing. And let's start with the curves adjustment. I'm just gonna bring up the black so we'll make a couple points on our curves and then lift the lowest one and maybe we can increase the highlights a little bit. And then I also want to play with these blues, like I mentioned before, if you bring in a hue and saturation layer, let's go to the blues. We can play with this dial, make things maybe more saturated. That's kind of fun. It makes the logo blue pop out more. And now actually before applying any of these effects, let's make a new layer and hit Command Option Shift E. That's gonna apply the entire image to its own layer. We can bring this up to Filter, Convert for Smart Filters, then Filter, Camera Raw Filter. This is gonna be kind of like the base level master adjustments that we're doing to the whole thing. So you can play with the exposure. I mean, maybe bring down the exposure. Could bring some more detail. And I still like boosting the shadows. I'm, I'm liking the jersey detail we're getting in the cutouts. They were pretty dark to begin with. And then of course, a little bit of texture and clarity, as well as some vignetting on the edges. Can bring more detail to that bottom portion. And then just keep the focus on the center, of course. And you can also play with the color grading. If you wanted to play with colors here, maybe we make everything a little bit more blue. I don't want to go overboard, but something around there. And we can turn back on those finishing effects we already played with, the hue and saturation, the curves. I've also got a texture I can add on. I've got this light leak filter thing that I use in a lot of my designs. Got it from unsplash.com. And this one I want to rotate vertically. We can actually probably size it down because this like red streak, I think is kind of a cool addition to the top part of the logo and the signature. And I wanna blend this a little bit more, so let's double click on this layer and just separate out these two points by holding Option. You can 
blend the darker parts to basically make them not show up. And this layer has a lot of blue in it, so we're kind of hiding the blues. So something like that, and we can also play with the opacity. And maybe just like the overall positioning of it. Maybe we do want to blow it up just to make it a little bit more out of the way, but it still gives like a nice little flare of color. And I'm not liking how much it's hiding the signature. So maybe just on the signature, let's put a mask on this layer. And just with a pretty low flow, let's just mask out parts that are getting in the way of the legibility of the signature. It's still kind of contributing to the overall gradient, but want to make sure that stands out enough. Can also add a color lookup on this image. So let's go to our adjustment layers, color lookup. And this one, I think this Fuji 3510 is kind of an interesting look. We don't have to go fully extreme with the effect, but just lowering the opacity to something like 40% just gives it some more interesting contrast. I also just want to see with the selective color layer what it looks like to change the whites to maybe more cyan. Yeah, see, I kind of like that. It's kind of, it's giving it more of a fade going up. And then you just kind of have this like washed blue gradient. So just a quick before and after of that. I like the color it's bringing, so I'm gonna leave it. The last thing I wanna do is duplicate this full image layer, Command J. And then if you go up to Filter, Blur, Gaussian blur. We're just gonna take a, a subtle blur to this. Yeah, maybe 3.5 pixels. And if you change the blend mode to something like screen or lighten even, but screen is gonna give you more of this effect. We can now hide this layer with a black mask, holding option, clicking on your mask, and then you can brush in certain parts on, you know, as much of a flow as you want. And it's just gonna allow us to like add some brightness in some spots that we might want a little bit brighter. So this is kind of a fun final adjustment you can do to your designs if you just want some like overall brightness, some glowiness in certain parts. So there you have it. We're going to stop there for the day. A little bit longer of a design. Hopefully you learned something. As always, let me know if you have any questions.